Okay, so this is my top five favorite moves of all time. Also one of the most challenging moves to learn, to teach. Uh, this is gonna be a short form version of it, just so you can kind of get a quick refresh while you're doing your workout. I will be doing an expansive and long-term video breaking this down into the pieces of it, but the kettlebell swing. The kettlebell swing for me is the best bang for buck move you can do in the entire gym. You're getting cardio, you're getting strength, you're getting hypertrophy, you're getting endurance, you're getting everything that you could possibly do, power everything in one move, right? But this also has to be done properly and is done so improperly so many different times. So step number one is we need to think about what this move is working. This is not an arm exercise, okay? Your arms are simply there because your legs cannot hold the kettlebell. Your arms only do one part of the move, which is the first part when we hike from the floor into the backswing position. Other than that, your arms at that point just become the lever or the string holding the kettlebell. This is a glute and hip movement. So think of it from there. Everything that you're doing comes from here. So that is step number one, is that know what you are working. We are working the hips, not the arms, not the upper body. Number two is that you need to not think while doing this move. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but if you think about the different steps of this move, you'll be too slow, you'll be behind, you'll start using your arms, you'll start trying to compensate in some way, shape, or form. So the best thing to do is practice the pieces, and then from there, find the rhythm and the flow of the movement. So those are the two biggest things that usually trip people up, is knowing what you're actually working and trying not to think too much. If you think too much, you're trying to make too many adjustments and it's gonna make the thing even uglier or you might start compensating in one place or the other and make a mistake. So step one is our setup. We wanna make sure that we're about 12 to 18 inches away from our bell, about again, arms distance away from the bell. We wanna have a nice triangle between our feet. You want just enough distance to get it between your legs. You don't wanna to be too wide and obviously you don't wanna to be too narrow unless you like hitting yourself with things. If that's the case, please call a specialist, call somebody else. From that point, we're going to kick our hips back into a hinge. This is a hinge movement, right? We're not just gonna drop down. So you can see all my weight is loaded forward at that point. I have no momentum, right? I wanna be set back, putting weight into my heels. I'm gonna grab my handle all the way around the bell, lean back, and I'm gonna tighten my arms. My arms are nice and tight. From here, I'm gonna hike it like a football. I wanna be back here. The bell should be above the knee, right? My elbow should be about in my mid thigh, and I wanna be here. If I'm down here, now my back is involved. Don't want that. So I'm gonna hike high. Once I get it here, the moment I get it here, I'm gonna tighten my butt, push into the floor and stand up. Just like that. I wanna go from here to here as quick as possible. Once that gets here, I go there. Don't worry about how high the bell goes. Most people think that they have to get it to here, which is why they start using their arms. A good kettlebell swing can be here, can be here, can be here, as long as it comes from here. It doesn't matter how high the bell goes. Once it goes high, wait for it to come back to you. Don't pull it back down, because if you pull it to the ground, then the weight is traveling this way, then it's probably gonna end up below your knees, and then you have a rounded back. Also, don't squat it down. Let it come back to you and kick your hips backwards and you should end up right in that same position that you started in. From there, depending on the type of kettlebell swing you're doing, if you're doing power swings or touch and go, you would go to the ground or you would repeat the cycle and it looks something like this. Pop up, explode, wait, sit back. Just pop the hips. As you can see, my arms are just holding on to the bell to make sure that it doesn't fly across the room. So that's a quick version of the kettlebell swing. Again, there will be a several part series on making sure that we have all that technique down, but that's just a quick reminder for you today.